redeemed us, Lord, from every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Warm welcome to everyone as we continue our journey into the Easter season here at Blessed Sacrament in Milwaukee. Uh, many more joining us uh, by live stream at this moment. We ask that the Lord help us to enter humbly and honestly into the sacrament that is before us, this great mystery of God's love. And so we ask the Lord for his pardon, for his peace. We cry out, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us one and all to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts, to offer you worthy prayer, and to ever to extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, Fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Thaddeus appeared claiming, that, claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to do nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean, at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, I have nothing to do with these men, and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it would destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you would not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One, One thing, thing I, I seek, seek, to dwell, to dwell in, the in the house of the, of the Lord. Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One, One thing, thing I, I seek, seek, to dwell, to dwell in, in the house of the Lord. Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord, all the days of my life, that I may gaze upon the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One, One thing, thing I, I seek, seek to dwell, to dwell in, the in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One, One thing, thing I, I seek, seek to dwell, dwell in the, the house of the Lord. Of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but in every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Jesus went to cross the Sea of Galilee, and a large crowd followed him, because they had saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes, he saw that a large crowd was coming to him. And so he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them even to have a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? And Jesus said, have the people recline. And there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. And then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks for them, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them, filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this truly is the prophet, the one who has come into the world since Jesus know, knew that they were going to come, carry him off to make him a king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. You have heard me talk about my brother Keith, and he's been on my mind uh, because he has a new, as I said, this um, divine mercy picture that's hanging in his house. I mean, it's something that we should all give thought to. We need these devotional objects uh, on our walls and a cross. I'm very big to have a cross in every room. Uh, even if you can't afford one, if you have a kid or a grandkid, have them just draw some two lines and put it on the wall and uh, it'll be more than enough. Uh, but every single room of the house having something. Um, and I think about when I'm over at his house and I needed something to drink, uh, you know, like a beverage, um, a soda, and uh, he sends me to his pantry and holy smoly, I open that thing up and it looks like there's enough food in there. He's a single man for, I'm going to say, at least uh, two years of food that is uh, stockpiled in there. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if he's a survivalist. I don't think that that's necessarily the case. Um, but he provides for himself. And it is um, of interest to me that he's not going to go without. Uh, if something were to happen, to the stock market tomorrow if something were to happen to the grocery store and people are fleeing there to get toilet paper again or whatever it is, he is fully stocked. Um, I'm not giving out his address for fear that people might go there instead of um, finding the proper places to purchase things. Um, it's what we call provision. A pantry is that, just simple. And some people keep a very basic one in the house, and it's like if I have guests coming over, um, surely there's going to be something that I can pull from there. I don't have to run around and maybe um, come up with a very fine meal for unexpected guests or whatnot. Uh, to have a pantry and to have it fully stocked, you know, with onions or whatever else is in there. I think there's a few potatoes uh, that were in there as well. Big sack of potatoes, actually. 
Um, provision, providing. And I have here an example of provision as well, or providing for others, that comes from the charity of many of you. Um, and it was on March 5th, around that time, that the Blessed Sacrament Christian women took up a baby collection. I don't know how many people saw what was gathered together. You know, there's a few items here that they were collecting. Um, but wow, I mean, it really added up. It was kind of false if you were just saying, oh, here's the, um, you know, a couple of baby items that are out at the entrances of the church. What they were doing is constantly collecting from the stockpiles that were coming in and brought them to the basement. And I have a beautiful image of that that was taken. And that took place on March 5th, as I said. Uh, that might seem like an eternity ago. But I have a feeling that these things have made their way to any number of pro-life uh, efforts going on in the city. Um, not everyone is able to see ahead at the cost of having a child, but praise be the Lord that there are generous souls, even those who no longer have children. You know, that's the great thing about it. I don't have a child, many of you don't. But wow, you know, to be able to contribute and to be able to have something to afford to some newborn and to a, a, a young mother, um, you know, just to prevent the idea of saying, well, I, I can't take care of a kid, so I'd rather have an abortion. Um, we provide, we provide uh, when we hear the call. You know, I'm, I'm trusting that none of us are deaf to it, you know, or so selfish in life as to say, well, you know, I had my kids, I, you know, I just have my family, I don't have to think about anyone else. Um, that it is good to be able to say, I'm in this world for others, whether I have children of my own. And that's part of taxation, by the way. You know, the taxes on our homes, the taxes on many things, are going to educate our kids, to raise them up, to be able to say, you are important. Even as we're exiting the world in this life, uh, it's good to provide for you, provide for your future. Praise be the Lord for proper taxation on all things uh, that provides for the needs of others, especially those who aren't able to provide for themselves. We are in it together. It's part of the American contract. Um, I raise that up, you know, the food pantry at my brother's house. The, uh, and then also as well, this beautiful example of people providing for others here in our parish. And this is just the tip of the iceberg of generosity. Many things that are provided for by many a soul here. People providing, in fact, weekly donations to keep this roof on our church and things clean and things going here, heated, cooling, whatever it is. Keep this project and mission going. People are providing and saying, here is something for the present moment towards the future. It's beautiful, the readings today. I think uh, about the early church being provided for. They might have seemed as though it was tough times. You know, I don't know how many of us could take a flogging for our faith. It would be an awful thing. To, to witness and to see, you know, 15 lashes by a Roman soldier or others. Um, I don't know. After the first lash, I'd probably be on the ground, already knocked out. But even amidst those difficult times, they rejoiced. And they rejoiced because they realized that every grace was provided to them by God. And the greatest grace of all was that this stuff that is going on here, hard as it might be, 
is but temporary. Now, it could take us out, but it is temporary in the grand scheme of things that there is a Lord who is risen from the dead. They brought the worst to him, and he is risen. And they had full faith and confidence in that, that he is victorious over sin and death. I mean, talk about being provided for. To have a faith that sees beyond the moment and sees beyond the years with full hope that indeed we will share in that same victory. And so they rejoiced, as it says, in whatever came their way, including the flogging, and they felt themselves privileged for being able to proclaim the name. Now, can you imagine that that is the faith that should be alive yet today in the hearts of everyone in the church? And it should be a faith that we shall provide to the children in future generations that make up this church. Have a school next door, 200 kids wondering whether or not the next day will provide for them. Coming from poor families, many of them. And yet they come in the security of the school building to be provided for with great ideas and the greatest ideas being all the stuff of the church and of the faith given to them on a constant basis. We are providing for the present moment towards the future. And by the way, that is the beauty of that word provide. My major work at the seminary is to help seminarians to see, to see things for what they are and what they could be and how their service and sacrifice might in fact create a better situation down the line. Yes, it'll take effort, it'll take sacrifice, take the hard days to get it done. Fact of the matter is to help them to see what is going on in this ministerial moment. What can you learn from it? How do you bring it to scripture? How do you bring it to tradition? How do you bring it to the pastoral aspects of the church? That isn't just about thinking about things. It is walking the walk and doing the doing. Not here to contemplate, not here to sit back and to think about things. Oh, that's a great thought. No, put your life on the line, get off your seats and get doing the work of the church. Get out there and do it. Just do it. It's not Nike that should have capitalization on that phrase. We are the ones. Just do it. Do these things in the name of the Lord. Do these things in the name of the Lord. Not just think about, oh, it'd be nice to give to some child or an infant. Oh, yeah, I'm going to think about that all day. But as for taking my hand and putting it into my wallet and taking out a single dollar towards the effort, no, that's just too much. I'm not into the doing. That's not my life. And can you imagine that Jesus Christ, if he lived that way, we wouldn't have anything like this. Jesus just lived for himself. <laughs> He just lived for himself. This would not be this morning. Praise be the Lord. Put his life on the line and gave his all. Can expect nonetheless, nonetheless of the followers of the Lord. Otherwise, they're just simply fictitious followers of the Lord. They're not even part of his company. They're, they're imaginary Christians. They're not doing the doing. They're just fantasizing about it. Oh, it'd be nice to do it. The thing about the word provide comes from two Latin words, from pro, ahead, and videre, beautiful word that was used by the Romans quite often, vidi, vici, vincet, I came, I saw, and I conquered, that's the great Caesars would say that. 
a vide, videre, to see. That's precisely what we're called to do. It's to see ahead. Nothing more and nothing less. To see ahead to the victory of heaven when all things are set right and Jesus Christ is there in full victory. May we be part of his company. I don't know. I'm trusting that people want to be part of his company rather than not. To see ahead and to see ahead to the great judgment. You know, you heard me talk about it on any number of occasions when Jesus Christ will be seated on his throne, and it's in the scriptures, where it says the people shall be gathered before him in the final hours of human reality and existence. There will be those on his right and those on his left. I mean, important to see ahead. Provide for yourselves. Provide for the church. Provide for the world. To see ahead to that moment in time in all honesty contemplation, and to be able to say there will be that day of judgment in which there will be those on his right and they will ask him, well, what did we do for you? So what you did for the least, you did for me. Go towards your reward. As to those on the left, go into the eternal hellfire because I simply do not know you. What you failed to do for the least among you, you failed to do for me. How to provide. And the Lord provides the future. He provides everything in advance. He says, let me give you a vision of the future. I'm going to provide for you this vision. And it's an important one. Either to follow or not to accept or deny, except Jesus Christ speaks the truth and what he has said is going to be, is going to be. So let us be that people that sees beyond this hour, beyond the years of our life, make provision for ourselves, for our souls, make provisions for our families, for our loved ones, be able to see beyond the present moment to the victory of Christ forever in glory, and that we might join him, that we might be part of his company. And we're given the hours even now to do the doing. Praise be the Lord. We're given this day, this week of life, if God is so gracious, the next year of our life, if God is so gracious, because everything comes from him. Nothing of our doing, nothing at all of our doing, this life. Everything is gift, and he just simply says, I've given everything to you. Are you making return and offering it to others? Provided for. And this much we know that in the Holy Spirit, every gift under the heavens has been given to us for the benefit of others. We rise and offer the many needs we have to the Lord. We pray for our Holy Father, and again for the intention he has for this month, that he has provided to the world the women who surround us, women who have offered many gifts to their families, to society, to the world, to the church, many women who are denied their dignity, denied who they are amidst um, this reality, we ask that we might afford them their proper due in every country and at every time. We pray to the Lord. We pray for this Easter season and the graces that are afforded 
the hard truths that are spoken of about life and death and what makes for greater life and life to the full, we pray that we might follow the words and the ways of Jesus rather than just think about them as something nice. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for our seminary community next door, for the men who are being formed to be able to give their all, to be able to be self-sacrificial, to be men among men. We ask that they might continue to grow in their formation. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who find this day difficult, who find hardships maybe unbounded happening within their lives, out of control, whether, whether it be illness in body, mind, or spirit, we pray that indeed the victory be known in Christ and that all might share in it. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who have died, for those who understand what it means to come before the judgment seat of God, in all honesty, giving every effort in advance, a provision in advance to say you're either on this side or this side, on my right or on my left. We pray for every soul that comes before Christ this day. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And we pause for a moment of silence and we'll offer to the Lord our other needs of this day. For all of these hopes and dreams we hold for ourselves, for others, and for the world, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, truly if there is one thing you have done is you have offered us things in advance. You have provided for us as you provide for us all things good in the Eucharist as well. You provide for us your very Son, body, blood, soul, and divinity for this day, for our strength, for our provision. We ask all things to be made possible through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you. Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received this wine we offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray that my sacrifice, as well as yours, may be acceptable <clears throat> to God, our Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, the offerings of your human family, that under the protective care, they may never lose what they have received but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just. It is our duty. 
It is our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, even if we be flogged. For on this time and in this day of Easter above all, we loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed that death. By rising, restores our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we live your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence, to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. We pray for the intention of today's Mass for Alex Kutz. Have mercy upon him and upon us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 
at the Savior's command, formed by his divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, especially the selfishness that is running rampant in our day and age, that I care only for myself and no one else. Graciously grant peace instead, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you who are present in this blessed sacrament in a very humble and generous and even silent way, you have said to your apostles in no uncertain terms years ago, peace, I leave you, and peace is my gift to you. Look not upon our sins and all their consequences, but rather look upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Be then his gift of peace to one another. Peace to you. God bless. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. If this is not what it means to be provided for, I don't know the definition of the word. Jesus foresaw this moment in advance and has given us everything, has given us himself. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Hallelujah. Body of Christ.
whatever we provide to others, to God and to his church, truly it is multiplied by the touch of Jesus as we heard in the gospel today. Indeed, we pray that um, he may multiply our efforts unto the greatness of his kingdom. And so let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, those you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forward in peace, this Easter peace of the Lord, to love and to serve him today. Praise be God. Thanks be to God.